quote Stephen A. Smith, a sports commentator, Serena Williams is the GOAT, greatest of all time. And as a black man, I'm incredibly, I'm incredibly proud of her accomplishments and how she and her sister have conducted themselves in the world of tennis and beyond. They are extraordinary role models. But when Serena Williams brought in the issue of gender and sexism into the argument, that's when she lost. I love Serena, but as a lawyer, I'm a rule follower. And I believe the umpire had every right to call her out on those offenses. She had no right to call him a thief in response to that. She smashed her own racket, and ultimately, his progressive penalties were what the rules allowed. Megyn Kelly of Megyn Kelly today. Before we get into this cartoon, it's important to note that Stephen A. Smith is a black man, as he noted, and Megyn Kelly is a white woman. So when the issue of sexism was brought up, uh, Serena Williams brought up the issue of sexism, she did not discuss race necessarily, but she did say, as a woman, I feel as though I am being penalized in a way that men who are not only male athletes, but men in, who play men's tennis are not being penalized for the exact same things. And when she said that, as you see with Stephen A. Smith, he felt that it was a blunder for her to bring up sexism, that it had nothing at all to do with sexism, but more or less her own poor sportsmanship. Although in the very same statement, he talks about how historically she's been known for her sportsmanship. So he has a contradiction of opinions there. Second, Megan Kelly says, I love Serena and I'm an attorney, but if we go by the rules, Serena did not act appropriately. So then we come over to this cartoon here on the left. This was um, in Australia. It was uh, King, King Tunes, I believe, King Cartoon. And when you look at the way that Serena is depicted, what are some of the, I don't want to say fraudulent, but the way in which she's depicted is a throwback to some of the historical tropes that many African Americans have been depicted. Serena Williams is known for her very voluptuous and athletic figure. In this particular cartoon, she is uh, larger, definitely could be classified as obese or overweight, even though being one of the greatest athletes in the world. Over here, she is being called a baby. There's a pacifier in the background. Her hair is sticking on top of her head as if to indicate that it is unkempt, that she is wild and unruly. They have given her large lips, and although I personally love having large lips, and a broad nose myself. Those are still throwbacks to things that historically have been used to demean black people and often liken them to animals or monkeys. But even aside from the very historical and inaccurate depiction of Serena Williams, if you go over here to the right, ooh, what is grossly inaccurate is the way that they depict Osaka. Osaka is of Japanese and Haitian American descent, but here they have her pictured as a blonde haired white woman. Traditionally, the women who Serena has played have in fact been white women, particularly blonde. I would argue if you could find me a brunette that Serena has played, I will take you to lunch. Mm -hmm. But overwhelmingly, under $10. <laughs> 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 overwhelmingly, the women that Serena has played, uh, has, uh, have been her competitors, if you line them up, you'd be hard pressed to be able to see one that differentiated from the other. So essentially what this person is saying is that Serena does not fit here. She does not belong here. She is very different than the standard, the very Eurocentric, very high wealth, high net uh, standard that we have for tennis. Tennis is not cheap. So even though the depiction of Serena is utterly egregious, I would go as far as to say on that particular day, two black women or two women of color were grossly disrespected. So the question we have to ask ourselves in terms of intersectionality <coughs> is, was Serena in fact discriminated against? If she was discriminated against, was she discriminated because she was black? Was she discriminated against because she was a woman? Or was she discriminated against because she was also from Compton? Because one thing that has not been brought up is that you have race, gender, and class. As we just discussed in the previous uh, cartoon, uh, Overwhelmingly, the sport is white, white women, but it is not a cheap sport. It is not inexpensive. And for a long time, it was a bastion of wealth, or it was a, it was a status symbol of wealth. Oh, where's the proof? Okay. So who is Serena Williams? Before we get into this and say whether or not it was gender discrimination, racial discrimination, who in fact is Serena Williams? Serena Williams hails from Compton, California. That's what she calls home. 
She is the sister of tennis pro Venus Williams, which you see here on the left when they were small children. Her current net worth is $88 million. Someone pointed out in an earlier uh, session that tennis is one of the few sports where women do have pay equity with men. Uh, unfortunately, the WNBA, women's soccer, women's hockey get paid, are grossly underpaid, but tennis is one of the few sports where you will experience some amount of uh, equality in pay. She is also the recent wife of the Reddit founder, Alexis Ohanian. I couldn't tell, I couldn't remember if his name was Alex or Alexis. I know the baby's name is Alexis. But that means that not only is she rich, but the person who she's chose to partner with for the rest of her life is also rich. Real rich. Real rich. <laughs> Serene Williams has won 23 Grand Slam titles, uh, Grand Slam and Wimbledon titles. She has three Olympic gold medals for women's doubles. She has one Olympic gold medal for women's singles. And she played the two 2017 Australian Open while two months pregnant and won. She is arguably one of the greatest athletes of all time, male or female. But I want to take you back. I want to take you back to some of the experiences that Serena Williams has endured in her time uh, as a tennis pro. She went pro in 1995, following in the footsteps of her sister, who was already a champion. And in 2012, her competitor, Car Caroline Wozniacki, imitated Serena, uh, Serena in an attention and her attention-grabbing physique by filling her bust and backside with tennis balls. The imitation was met with laughter. And then I'll come back and show you all what Serena said. So this was an imitation because there was so much attention being given to Serena Williams' very full figure. Again, if we go back to that first part too, she did not fit the standard slim and tall physique that other tennis players did. So if you look and see, both her bust and her backside, and if you listen to the commentators, they're laughing and joking. If you listen to the crowd, they're laughing and joking. No one sees this as a violation or a racist trope. Now it's interesting to note that she is playing Anna Sharapova, who has been um, considered Serena Williams' rival. Even though she has been, uh, Sharapova has taken, uh, admitted to and been caught taking performance enhancing drugs in an effort to beat Serena Williams, she never did it. But somehow people keep saying that she's a competitor. I'll let that be where it is. Um, so Carol, Caroline was not only mocking Sharapova, like, well, maybe if I look like Serena, I'll win. She was also mocking Serena. To that, Serena would respond to, would respond to the impression as follows. I know Caro, and I would call her my friend. I don't think she meant anything racist by it. As a woman of color who has herself experienced very racist incidences with people of, uh, who are non-black, I can say that there have been times where I felt pressure to conform and say, well, no, it's not a big deal. They didn't really mean it like that, if for nothing else but for self-preservation. So it's important to note that even though Serena Williams, coming back to the 2018 match, did call out sexism, she never called out racism. And it is because very often when you have the intersection of both sexism and racism, the weight of that is just too much to bear and you have to choose the lesser of two evils. Okay. So Serena Williams has been over tested for drugs despite her, her competitor, Anna Sharapova, who was found taking performance, performance enhancing drugs told that being black gave her an advantage due to her animalistic thrust of her large glutes, eroticized due to her fuller figure, even when compared to her sister, who ironically had a more traditional tennis shape, and has been labeled as gang affiliated due to her celebratory sea walk dance that she did at the end of uh, the US Open in 2012. Let's watch. All right, well that video is unavailable, but 
<laughs> uh, she was doing the traditional, at one point it was called the Crip Walk, when it became a lot more mainstream, it was called the Sea Walk. She did it to signify to her family and her friends who were in the audience that, yo, we're from Compton, we're from the bottom, but we're here, we made it. She is in no way gang affiliated, not at $88 million. But the media chose to invoke again her class, not just her race, not just her gender, but also class. You do not belong here. You're just basically a gang-affiliated black girl from the ghetto, and you need to be glad that we let you here. So that brings us to the main point of today's workshop. What is intersectionality? Intersectionality theory is a metaphor to understand how multiple systems of inequality can compound and create obstacles that are, not bi that are not binary in thought. A prism to understand social justice problems as one marginalized identity informs the other. So it's not enough to say that Serena Williams is a woman, Serena Williams is black, Serena Williams grew up in a low income area as if they are separate entities, but that one informs the other. Was Serena Williams discriminated against because she was black or was it because she was a woman? If she was discriminated against because she was a woman, how much of her being black influence the discrimination, the way in which it manifested itself. But the creator of intersectionality, Kim, excuse me, Dr. Kim, Kimberly Crenshaw, will explain to you a little bit more in depth on intersectionality theory. Intersectionality is just a metaphor for understanding the ways that multiple forms of inequality or disadvantage sometimes compound themselves and they create obstacles that often are not understood within conventional ways of thinking about anti-racism or feminism or whatever social justice advocacy structures we have. Intersectionality isn't so much a grand theory, it's a prism for understanding certain kinds of problems. African American girls are six times more likely to be suspended than white girls. That's probably a race and a gender problem. It's not just a race problem, it's not just a gender problem. So I encourage people to think about how the convergence of race stereotypes or gender stereotypes might actually play out in the classroom, between teachers and students, between students and other students, between students and administrators, and commit themselves to understanding that as a way of intervening and providing equal educational opportunity for all students, regardless of their identity. Identity isn't simply a self-contained unit. It is a relationship between people in history, people in communities, people in institutions. So schools do a good job when they understand that and when they commit themselves to curricular development, to opportunities in the school, for all students to understand the histories that have brought us to this particular moment. 